Hi everyone, we're joined with a very special guest today, John Eads. John is an author, he's a motivational speaker, and he's a leadership development expert. John is the CEO of Learn Loft, a leadership development company which exists to turn managers into leaders. John was named 2017 LinkedIn Top Voice in Management and Workplace. His writing and content has reached over 7 million leaders. As a motivational speaker, he connects to the hearts and minds of leaders from all the industries and experience. Hi, John. It is so great to have you here with us today. I'm excited to be here, Priya. All right. So today we discuss uh, the future of work in times of these uh, global crises and its impact on the leadership. Uh, so, you know, a lot has changed due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. And it seems like, you know, uh, someone just pressed a fast forward button there and remote work has just, uh, you know, moved a pretty, a pretty fast for us. And we're just like in 2030 now. Uh, so, you know, big companies like Google, Apple, Twitter, all these companies are implementing remote work policies and all their efforts are driven towards keeping their employees safe. In this current scenario, do you see the future of work as remote work or do you think that you know this is a temporary shift and the world might just go back to its usual way of working once the pandemic gets you know subsided it's a great question uh the future is some blended approach where you'll have the majority of people having the option to work from home or work from the office uh, I don't think any, if you ask anybody, some people love working from home, others hate it. Um, right now, we don't have a, a choice, but I think the future is a blend of both. And that's where organizational leaders will both see a, a financial gain from remote work. Uh, and then also you'll have employees more engaged and they'll appreciate their flexibility more and more. So I think the future is a blended approach, Priya. Um, of both working from home as well as working remotely. But here's where it gets interesting. The, the, how productive are these teams going to be when some people are working from the office and other are working remotely? And that's where leadership becomes so important because the only way you know, teams perform well is if they're working well together. So how can leaders leverage the technology that they have in front of them to, to no matter where people are working to continue to perform at the highest level. And that's where the challenge will really be. Yes. Uh, actually that brings me to another question that, you know, I mean, I was reading and in one of your quotes I came across, uh, you'd said that, you know, most people can manage a remote team, but only a few can lead. Uh, so, in, in, in the context that we were talking, in, in, you know, you mentioned right now. So what does that shift really mean specifically for the leaders? Because, you know, uh, many leaders have never really led a remote team before now. And uh, leading a remote team is certainly different and a bit more challenging than, you know, leading a team when, when, they are, when they're sharing the same space in their office. Yeah, the, the, it, it's not that difficult to manage a remote team. You just simply do what you previously were doing. You get their weekly updates or their performance and you maybe you have a team meeting, maybe you don't. Uh, you can manage a remote team. You can micromanage them. You can do it. The hard part is how do you lead them? Hmm. Now, it's important we understand what it means when I say lead because we define leadership as someone whose actions inspire, empower, and serve in order to elevate others. So those words are chosen very carefully, Priya. Inspire means to breathe life into somebody. Yeah. Now, just think of now managing a remote team versus leading one. You can go manage a remote team and suck the life right out of your team by the tasks and the things. Leading them, breathing life into them getting more out of them than they think there's possible, that's leadership. That is, that is the act of inspiring. And that's why only few end up leading because they default to the management stuff of what have you done? When is it due? Those kinds of things. So that's where that first word inspire comes in. Can, can managers of remote teams breathe life into their teams? 
Very important. The second is to empower. Empowerment is all about helping people make decisions where the information is, giving people ownership of their decision making. Remote work forces this in some way, right? Because now all of a sudden we're working remotely, we own our schedule, we don't have people just walking into our office. So we've got to take more ownership of our own decision making. And it's it's easy to micromanage and make decisions for people even when they're remote, but the best leaders of teams will empower their people's to make decisions. And the last, the last key word is to serve. You know, can we flip that pyramid upside down from a leadership perspective and look at ourselves as we work for them, not they work for us. And when you inspire and you empower and you serve, you'll be on your way to elevating other people. And that's the key to successful leadership today. And here's why I say, Priya, that few lead remote teams because that kind of leadership is really hard when you're in person it's even harder when you're remote so that means leaders are going to have to do things differently if they want to breathe life into their team and empower them to make the decisions and to serve them the best they can so when you say differently you know it it, it raises another question here that do you mean right tools right because a lot is being a lot it's being said about, you know, leaders should use X kind of tools, Y kind of technology. Is it, is it, does it come down to those or are we talking about more, you know, talking about tools like personal interactions, one-on-one -on -one meetings, what, what kind of, you know, tools can really help leaders here? It's a great question. Um, if, if you're going to go lead a remote team effectively, technology is going to have to be leveraged, you know, whether it be, video technology like zoom or google or those kinds of things of course as well as tools to help you know you get to know your team better to stay on track i mean things like people box are a great example of that of tools that leaders can leverage um but at the end of the day if if you're gonna go you know some of the the standards that we would we would think that are important for someone leading a remote team a one-on-one -on -one meeting is a great example of that right? Do you have scheduled time on a calendar with each team member for one-on-one -on -one time each week? If you have a large team, it's every other week. But it can't just be haphazardly. I mean, the daily check-ins are great, but can we get time on the calendar to make sure we're understanding how people are doing? We know what's important to them. We know that we're, we're working on the right things and helping them advance both the team and their career. I mean, those are examples of tangible things that leaders do that managers don't. Hmm. Right. So t talking a little more about the one-on-one -on -one meetings here, you know, uh, mostly what managers or leaders, you know, they, they, it, it is, maybe it is now that these meetings are even more important because it's, 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 you know, uh, it's very important to check in. It's very important to know your mo the motivation levels of your team. So what would be your advice to leaders, uh, you know, and how to optimize this, this tool for them and how to make the most of it? how to have an effective uh, uh, utilization of one-on-one -on -one as a tool, which probably is, is kind of an underdog, maybe not really looked at, you know, as, as a way. Well, if, yeah, it starts with, it starts with really under, for leaders to understand that remote work success is met at them. I'll say this again. If teams are going to be successful with remote work, it's going to come down to the manager. It, it's going to come down to the manager being effective at how they lead their teams. And one-on-one -on -one is a part of that and an important part of that. So if, if you're talking about what are these key things that I'm going to go do in my one-on-ones that are essential, um, it, it really does start with understanding that you are the key. And then the second thing is it's got to be on your calendar every single week. I mean, in our research, you know, only 60 to 65 percent of managers even have scheduled team meetings much less scheduled one-on-one -on -one meetings mm -hmm. so if, if if the team meeting is on the calendar every single week no matter if ands or buts mm -hmm. 
It is a hundred percent of managers are having a weekly team meeting. And then a hundred percent of managers need to be having scheduled one-on-one -on -one times with their teams. If, if you have a big team, as I mentioned, it can be every other week. But the point is, if we're going to be working remotely, these things have to be on the calendar to make sure that teams are effective and they're working on the right thing. So again, I know that's not breaking any news, Priya, but when only 65% of managers even have these meetings on their calendar, we have to start at the foundational level versus trying to help the ones that have it to get better. Right. Correct. Uh and talking a little more about communication here, you know, so I was talking to uh, uh, another, uh, you know, leadership expert and, and a remote work expert, Laurel Farrer, last week, and she mentioned something about communication, which I think you also mentioned just a while ago. So how, how, do, how should leaders look at communication when they're working remotely? And uh, is, is over communication, uh, you know, really required there? Or should they opt for an asynchronous communication? How should they really... Uh, strike a balance uh, there? Uh, it's a good question. Communication in general, um, everything relies on it. Everything breaks down when communication breaks down from relationships to marriages to best friends. I mean, the moment that we stop communicating is when it starts to break down. Okay. So Let's, let's start right there, that no matter if you're leading a remote team or an in-person team, leadership is a one-on-one -on -one game and it's relationships are at the center of it. So um, you can't communicate enough as a leader of a remote team. Hmm. You can't communicate enough as a leader of a remote team because people need even more than they're getting when they're in the office because they're getting more every single day when they're remote people are going to start to spin the stories in their head if they don't hear anything. Right. So over, I mean, over communication, if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to have to pick one over communicate over under communicate. Now, once the communication starts, we like to think about successful communication as the three C's. Can your communication be clear? Can it be concise? And most importantly, can it be conclusive? Clear, concise, and conclusive. Now I'll explain these three things. So if, if we're leading, if I'm leading a remote team and I'm going to go improve my communication, how can I make sure the communication that I have every single day, is it, is it clear what I'm asking people to do? Hmm. Do I get that email or that Slack note message? And do I know who's responsible for it and what it is? Then can I make it concise? Can I make it as short as it possibly can be with the most important information in it? So who, what's, who's responsible and what is it? Is it as short as it can be? And then most importantly, can I make it conclusive? Because communication is all about the person receiving the communication, not the person delivering it. So can I make sure that person knows what the pain or gain is if this is done or not done in the message? So can I make it clear? Can I make it concise? And can I make it conclusive? And if our messages as a leader start hitting that lens of clear, concise, and conclusive, whether it's in a Zoom call, an email, or a Slack message, our, our communication will improve. Right. I want to add one thing. This is so important. So often we get into this efficiency versus is an effectiveness mindset. And most of the time when we're leading our remote team, we get into this, how, how, of, how of effective can we make it? How effective can we make it? How effective can we make it? And it's so important. But just keep in mind that relationships and building them take time. It takes time. So we don't want to rush the development of that relationship and just adopt it all to what have you done for me lately? What are the tasks? Um, what are the, what's the output? There's a time and a place for that for a remote team, but don't lose sight of that relationship building com component in communication because the stronger the relationship is, the better the output is going to be. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you know, like we discussed that remote work is here to stay. Uh, in fact, it is the future of the work, right? So 
what does that change for uh, the leaders of the future? I mean, if we talk about its impact on, on the leadership uh, on the whole, and how can we prepare today's workforce for a future that is very different from what they might have imagined pre-pandemic or, you know, the last month or so when, when, when the world was probably normal and we were all going to our offices and it was a very different world. I, I, the biggest, the biggest place this is going to impact is the mindset that many leaders that never thought that they could get there are going to now get there. Yeah. And I'll explain. Mo, there, there's some, there's many leaders, myself included, that just didn't think that we could be as productive or people could work remotely or from home to the same level as we could work if we're all in the same office. I mean, there's a, there, there's always been this kind of how many hours are you in the office and that dictates how hard you work. Right. And, and there's some, there's certainly some great truth to the success of teams and people for how hard they work there. There's no shortcut to hard work. Okay. It is essential, but where this is changing is that many leaders just assume that you had to be in the office. And if you weren't in the office, you weren't working. And so what this pandemic is going to do is it's going to change their mindset to realize that one, they can be very productive, not in their office. And two, so can their team. And so while the future is certainly some blend of working remotely and working in an office and getting together, um, I think the biggest change is in the mindset of the leaders that never thought that this is possible because they're seeing themselves be produ as productive not being in the office. And I think that's one of the big changes. And, and like most things, it starts with the mindset shift. And that hopefully will help the future of remote work and, and how people work moving forward. Right. So to conclude this conversation, I would just uh, ask you the last question, which is that, you know, if, if you had to, uh, you know, give top three tips to leaders to lead successfully in these difficult times, uh, what would those top three tips uh, be? The first is that um, remember that you are the connector of cause. Uh, when we get into remote work, we it, it becomes very easy to forget why we do what we do and why it's so important. So while it'll be easy for you and your team to focus on the tasks and the outcomes that we need, don't forget that to continue to remind yourself of why your team exists and why it does what it does. Um, don't assume that your people are going to remember that. So you connect your team to a mission or a cause that is deeper than just the paycheck that they receive every two weeks. That is still going to be your responsibility from a leadership perspective. And it might be more important when you're remote and you're not with each other all the time. So that's tip number one. Um, the second tip is to, um, ensure that you have clear standards for your remote team. All a standard is, is defining what good looks like. And in our work, what we found is that the best leaders don't define what good looks like. They define what great looks like. So ensure that you're defining what great looks like for your team. What is, what is their schedule look like? Do they have complete autonomy over that schedule? Can they work when they want, how they want to work, where they want to work? Um, or are you going to try to define that for them? Define that standard for them so it's clear. Hmm. What's your team meeting standard look like? What's your one-on-one -on -one standard look like? Define what great looks like for your team. It'll help you and your team perform better. So that's number two. And then number three, which we talked about a little bit before, make your communication more clear, concise, and conclusive. You will not successfully lead a remote team if you're not an effective communicator. So continue to work on those skills the best you can. Now, here's where it gets hard. Most leaders think they're great communicators, but if, if, they, if I were to ask their spouse if they're a great communicator, what would they say, right? They're probably gonna say not very good. So just keep that growth mindset and keep your learner hat on to say, how do I continue to get better from a communication perspective for my remote team? So th that's how I would summarize them. Number one, remember that you're the connector of cause. Number two, be really clear about defining what great looks like for your team, those standards. And number three, 
become a great communicator using clear, concise, and conclusive language, and it'll help you lead your remote teams more effectively. Right. John, that was some great leadership advice from you. And I'm sure a lot of leaders who are, you know, possibly facing the challenges right now can really use that advice. It's really actionable. It's honest. And it's, 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 it's great advice. So if, you know, these leaders are to look up to you and if they, if they want to get in touch with you, how do they find you? Uh, John Eads on LinkedIn is the best place. Uh, but you can go to learnoff.com. You can go to johneeds.com. Um, but I'll close with this, uh, Priya. I very much believe that people are right where they're supposed to be. And so if you find yourself now leading a remote team and you're uncomfortable, you're right where you're supposed to be. You can adapt, you can change, you can be successful in this role. This is not only for certain people. You're right where you're supposed to be and to give everything that you can to be successful right where you are and that's all you can do. And so I would encourage anyone listening today or watching today that you're right where you're supposed to be and work really hard to be as good as you can be right now. All right. Thank you, John. That was really great. It was really nice connecting with you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. You're welcome.